Hello, hello, hello. This is Stories for Kids with Morale Podcast, bringing you stories to educate and entertain you. Zippity doo da, zippity day. Today's story is a mushy story. I wonder, do you like mushrooms? I'm a mushroom. Should I explain before reading the story? First, let me ring the story bell. Bum, bum, bum. And again. Okay. And let me say hello to Birdie. Hello, Birdie. <coughs> ha, ba, ba. Now, now I will explain why I am a mushroom. And, by the way, to prepare your minds, it's all true. It's true because... Well, I am Morel, M-O-R-E-L, and Morel, M-O-R-E-L, is the name of a mushroom. And it is a very tasty mushroom. My gosh, having said that, I don't think I've ever had my own mushroom. It's very expensive, by the way. (laughs) Mushrooms are Edible sporophores. I'm going to spell that S P O R O P H O R E S. And I pronounce it sporophores. But we need to be very careful when picking mushrooms in the wild because some sporophores are inedible, they are poisonous toadstools, and maybe hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic, spell that one for you, H-A-L-L-U-C-I-N-O-G-E-N-I-C. Okay, apparently the best tasting mushrooms are called portobello mushrooms. And they are often used as a meat substitute in vegetarian dishes. And there is the Italian white alba truffle. It's the world's most expensive mushroom, the Italian white alba truffle. It can cost about $330 per gram. $330 $330 per gram. And I did say that the morel mushroom is also expensive. The morel mushroom is expensive. That can cost you $254 per kilogram. Hmm, 254 I always knew I was an expensive person. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's find out about the mushroom story. The mushroom story. So, let me begin. Okay, Birdie is ready, and I hope everyone is sitting comfortably. Birdie, you are fine on your perch, yes? Okay, fine, fine, fine. So, This story is titled Brothers and Mushrooms, but we can set aside the brothers and just call it mushrooms. Mama was very fond of mushrooms. I don't mean to say that she was a greedy person or fond of eating, but if she had a weakness, it was for mushrooms. When she was a little girl, she had lived in a country place where they grew in abundance and she had often told the children how delightful it was to go mushroom gathering, how pretty the creamy white heads looked, sometimes almost hidden in the grass, like eggs in a mossy nest and what fun and eagerness used to be heard when 
some specially fine one was suddenly caught sight of. But Mama's own children, Lancy and Dick, Mama, by the way, was not very rich in children. She had only those two little sturdy boys. Lancy was nine and Dick was seven, had never had the good fortune to live in a mushroom country. All they knew of mushroom was when they sometimes happened to catch sight of them in the kitchen, when Cook had bought a little basket of them, paying very dear for it, no doubt, because Missy was so partial to them. And there was great rejoicing, as you can fancy, when one autumn, Mama told her little boys that they were going down into the country to spend September with an old aunt who lived not far from where Mama herself had lived when she was a little girl. And... Is there um, those funny things, mush, mush? I forget the name there, asked Dick. Mushrooms, said Mama. Oh, yes. In September, there will be plenty, no doubt, she replied. And your birthday's in September, said Lancy. Oh, Mama. Oh, Dick, he went on, giving a great spring in his delight. Just think, we can gather mushrooms for it, nice, wild mushrooms that taste ever so much better than the ones you buy in the shops, don't they, Mama darling? Then forced mushrooms, you mean, Lancy, she replied. Yes, forced mushrooms, that means Mushrooms grown in hot houses or hot beds. For she saw on the boy's lips their question, What are forced mushrooms, please? Never have the same flavour, I'm sure. Besides, one hasn't the fun of hunting for them and gathering them oneself. I'm sure you will enjoy that part of it. I'm sure we shall. I'm sure we shall like Femi Moore much better than the seaside, said both boys, even though we have liked it very much, added tender-hearted Dick. You see, he was so afraid of Mama Bean at all hurt. If she fancied, he meant that they had not enjoyed the seaside after all the trouble and expense she and Papa had been at to take them there. For, as he told Lancy afterwards, he was sure he had seen Papa pay three gold pounds for their railway tickets at the station the day they came. I hope you will enjoy it very much, said Mama kindly, and I'm sure you will, and so shall I. It will be so nice to show my little boys some of the places I loved when I was, as little as they are. And to teach us how to find mushrooms, said Dick, quite satisfied. He had got the hard word right this time. Fernie Moore turned out to be very nice, quite as nice as the boys' pleasantest fancies had pictured it. The old-fashioned house was the funniest and prettiest in the world. So was the garden. And the uncle and aunt were the kindest and nicest of old uncles and aunts. There was only one disappointment, and that was the mushrooms. There had been a good crop of them, said auntie a week or two ago but since then it had been so dry the whole season had been unusually dry that there were none at all 
possibly in another 10 days or so, if it rained, there might be another crop. But then one scarcely dared wish for rain. It would be so bad for the harvest. So Mama and her two little squires wandered about the fields in vain, seeking for the pretty, creamy, egg-like balls among the grass, which Mama had so often described. It can't be helped, she said. It's better than if it had done nothing but rain. That would have spoiled our visit, even if we had had basketfuls of mushrooms. But Lancy and Dick didn't seem quite sure that they agreed with her. They had got the idea of mushrooms so in their heads that I don't think they would have grumbled even if it had rained. If only there are some before Mama's birthday, it won't matter so much, said hopeful little Dick. Mama's birthday was the 13th of September, and that year it fell on a Monday. All Friday and Saturday it had rained, really poured, and everyone was surprised that Lancy and Dick did not grumble at it. By Sunday morning it cleared, and Lancy who was dressed first, ran out into the garden for a stroll before breakfast. Here he met a friend of his, an under gardener, who had come to do some little piece of work about the hot houses, which could not be neglected even on Sunday. Fine morning, Master Lancy, said the lad. My, how did it pour yesterday? Griffith, said Lancy. Will the rain have brought up any mushrooms, do you think? Oh, bless you, yes. See him, Master Lancy. Just you go down the lane to the left of the lodge till you come to a cottage. Then creep through the gate opposite. It's awkward to open, but you'll easily get through. And see if you don't find mushrooms. There'll be lots by tomorrow, if we've some sun today. It's tomorrow. I want to get them at tomorrow morning early, said Lancy. Thank you, Griffith. After breakfast, Dick, in turn, went out for a little fresh air. He strolled towards the stable, as he was very fond of one of the dogs there. On his way, he came across a groom called Nichols. Good morning, Nichols, said Dick. Should you think, Nichols, there be any mushrooms by tomorrow morning? We're sure to be, Master Dick. If you're up early, I'll show you the best field in the place for them. Come out of the stable yard as soon as you're dressed, and I'll show you the way. Thank you, Nichols, said Dick. Yes, I'll come. Don't tell anybody else, Nichols. No, no, sir. We'll keep it a secret. Lancy and Dick went to church together and were together, as usual, all day. But strange to tell, not one word was said by either boy to the other about their plans for the next morning. Some mischievous sprite had put it into their heads for almost the first time in their lives to have a secret, and not a kind secret either, each from the other. I'm the eldest, thought Lancy. I think it's only fair I should get the mushrooms for Mamma's birthday. Lancy's bigger and stronger than I am, thought Dick. If he went with me, he'd gather ever so many more, and Mamma wouldn't think it was me at all that had got them. Monday morning came. 
The boys slept in separate rooms at auntie's. Each had a tiny dressing room and a sofa bed, so it was easy to get up and dress without brother knowing. Lancy was first, but it took him some time to find Griffith and to ask him again where to go, which he had partly forgotten. Dick was luckier, for Nichols was waiting for him and took him by what he called a short cut to the field he had described and helped him over the hedge, telling him the mushrooms grew thickest a bit up the field. Up the field trotted Dick. But he had not gone far before he stopped short in surprise. Who was that coming towards him from the other end? And who can that be, thought the newcomer, as a small stout figure caught his eye, a round brown Holland little person, not unlike a mushroom button on two legs. I do believe... He said aloud, I do believe it's Dick. I do believe, said Dick. I do believe it's Lancy. They stared at each other for a few minutes, not quite sure what to say or do. Then they thought better of it and burst out laughing. It's no good doing without each other, said both together. The mushrooms were plentiful and the gathering of them proved quite as nice as Mamma had told them. And it was two very happy little boys who carried up a splendid plateful with many happy returns to her door that morning. But when Mamma had kissed and thanked them, each looked at each other. Mama, said both together, we weren't going to have been quite good about them. And then they told the whole story. But it was all right at the end, they said. And, oh, Mama, how do you like the mushrooms cooked? Fried or with sauce? Auntie told us to ask. I don't mind said Mama. They are sure to taste good anyway, now that they are flavoured with Lance's and Dick's brotherly love. Oh, that's the end of the story. Brothers working together. Yes, to give Mama a very happy birthday, rather than brothers working separately. It's great to collaborate and work together. I hope you enjoy the story. And oh, now you can look at me in a different way. Morel the mushroom. <laughs> oh, by the way, Morel the very expensive mushroom. Yes, that's better. I will be back. You can see what you can find about mushroom. And uh, how do you like your mushrooms? Let me know. And for us, have you ever had a very expensive mushroom? I will be back with another story soon. Take care for now. And please subscribe, subscribe to the podcast. Stories for Kids of Morel Podcast. That's the name of the, of the podcast. Please subscribe and please share with others. I'll see you soon. Okay. Birdie says bye-bye. Bye-bye, Birdie. Okay, 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 okay. Bye for now. Bye.